Any other questions? I have a prologue question. Yeah. Um, do we, so I know there's a, like a standard amount of solution we know we can put into a joint, right? If I recall correctly, small, like the knee, shoulder, four to six yeah. ML. Do you, do you, um, is there any benefit to fully filling that joint capsule until there's maybe, you know, resistance and we, we know that it's full on our end or is that, can that be risky? <laughs> So um, this is it's really a question because I think it it really gets at a uh, a deeper concept in our prolotherapy world, which is if you talk to some of the elders, like you put ten cc's in a knee joint, you put ten cc's in a shoulder joint, you put five cc's in an SI, um, and <clears throat> while it's not like they're blowing out everybody's joints and you know all their patients are having complications because of that. I just think that there's a threshold that uh, it's kind of like your the the concept of an LD50, right? The lethal dose, the, a a dose of a substance that will be lethal in 50% of the rats or humans that ingest this, right? I think at five cc's in a shoulder joint, the chance of blowing the capsule is extremely extremely low, and that chance goes up a little bit when you get into the 10 cc range, right? Um, and uh, so I, I think the, the one time that there is an advantage to trying to expand the joint capsule is when we have an adhesive capsulitis. And we've seen that four or five times now here where doing that hydrodilation where we do 20 to 30 cc's, we really get an improvement in, in range of motion and symptoms. Mm -hmm. Outside that, I don't, I don't think that there's a benefit <clears throat> and I also think it's really difficult to know when you're going to get that to that point where the joint capsule is going to separate and you're going to have leakage of fluid. And uh, that thought process comes from an article that um, I read this probably last year, the year before, uh, but it was looking at what's the accuracy of injecting the subtalar joint um, with just palpation base, so no imaging. So what they did was they took... Uh, basically pain med docs who like that's what they do day in day out is they do joint injections and so they'd be considered highly skilled and they looked at okay when that doc thinks they're inside the joint then they would inject the contrast and look at fluoro so they're basically trying to say like uh, what's the accuracy of doing a palpation based subtalar joint injection and um, interestingly they only injected three cc's and um, I don't remember the exact number, but I, the, the range was something like uh, 10 to maybe 30% of those patients, they saw extravasation of the, um, contrast. the contrast outside of the joint. Mm -hmm. Now, none of these patients had ankle pain. And so their thought was that maybe three cc's in the subtalar joint is too much. And, and I, in some patients, you're blowing up the joint capsule and then you're causing. But at least from the discussion, I don't think any of those docs thought, oh, I'm about to blow the joint capsule and they are just blue. Or mm. I feel like they would have stopped before that and not just continued. But again, that's also an assumption from the study. But so I, I don't think that uh, I think there's certain scenarios where we're not going to feel that joint capsule giving out, especially if there's a, a, a weakness in a particular area.